Hello everyone. This is just a small video to uh, to show off something from the uh, from the Apple II demo, uh, which I showed off several years ago. Actually, quite a, a few years ago. Um, I think it, I was going to say quite a few years ago, but now I'm not sure exactly how many years ago it was. I think it was must have been close to 10 years ago. Um, I did make a video showing off this uh, tour of the Apple II GS. And um, it's a program that I'm still very fond of because uh, it really, I've really never seen anything quite like it. It really tries to walk you through the process, not just of using a computer. I mean, it starts off with how to use a mouse and, you know, how to click the mouse button and things like that. But it really, if you look at the menus here, you know, it really... Um, tries to tell you a little bit about here about how computers work like it where the info goes it tells you um you know like how information transfer in a computer works how information gets from the keyboard to the to the computer itself and to the monitor and things like that and then here under applications you know it, it basically introduces you to the concept of you know, what is a word processor what is a database what is a spreadsheet and then briefly a graphics program and more um it's, it's kind of funny when when you I think about it now. I'm, I'm just realizing these are still kind of the same. Uh, I mean, word processing and spreadsheet. That's basically the two main drivers of uh, Microsoft Office, which is pretty much the only piece of consumer application software that has any real significant market share in the world today. So you know, this is Word, this is Excel, and this is Access, and this is um, I guess Paint. Um, so, I mean, you know, the, the basic usage of computers, the things that people use computers for haven't changed that much. But anyway, I mean, this, so this, you know, introduces you to how some basic applications look on the computer. And then, you know, there's this, which is really like for beginners who have never used a computer before. So I, I'm quite fond of this program because uh, it really does, uh, does show some nice things. It has some nice content for people who uh, want to use a computer for the first time. It's quite a nice introduction to, uh, you know, to using a computer. But then suddenly at the end here, there's programming. And, you know, the 1980s were a time when it was more common for people to want to program. It was, it was more commonly thought that people who used computers uh, would uh, graduate, if you will, from being computer users to being computer programmers. And I remember uh, when I had uh, the Apple II GS, I mean, that was our first family computer, which we got when I was like six years old. And I remember when we got it, it came with several manuals, like some really big, thick manuals. And one of them was about how to program in AppleSoft Basic, which is something that you wouldn't get with a computer today. So I just wanted to take a look at this. Uh, somebody did request several years ago, I think, that I show this part of the program. Uh, and indeed, it's, it's not about how to program, it's more about why would you want to program. That's what it says, why program. So it's about why would you want to program. So it's basically introducing people who are using computers for the first time to the idea of maybe you'd like to be a computer programmer, which just isn't something that would happen today. I mean, today, there's not really much expectation that somebody who uses a computer just for email or web surfing you know, watching YouTube videos or whatever. There's not much expectation that that person would become a computer programmer, but it was different back in the 80s. So let's take a look. Let's go back in time a little bit, back to the 1980s, to a time when an introduction to a home computer included an introduction on why would you want to program a home computer. Let's get started. One moment, please. Your Apple II GS is preparing the section called Why Program. Don't forget, whenever you want to go back to the main menu, just press the ESC key. I wonder, did they, did they explain in this uh, tutorial that ESC stands for Escape? I think they... Oh, I, I love the music. It's, it's taking me back again. I just, every time... It gets me every time. I love the music in this uh, in this program so much. It's so good. Okay, introduction to programming. This is Robin, who is very helpful to have around on an expedition. I believe his name is a pun on robot. Moving on. Robin understands English in a limited sort of way. If you say five, Robin walks forward five steps.
If you say left, Robin turns left. Suppose you want Robin to go to the mess tent and get you a cup of coffee. To make him go forward, you type a number between 1 and 9. To make him turn, you type R or L for right or left. To try it, click the forward arrow or press return. This is also a time when the word return was commonly used to refer to... Uh... Actually, is this a, a platform nomenclature? I think... I think on the PC that key might have always been the enter key, but I think on, on Apple's for a while it used to be return. Do they still actually do they still call it return today? I don't know. I'm not an Apple user. I was I was an Apple II user back in the in back in the day, but I'm not really fond of Macs, so I, I do not use Macs for anything. Okay, type a number between one and nine to make Robin walk forward. Uh, let's start with uh, a cautious number three. Now decide whether Robin should keep going forward or should turn. Forward, type another number between 1 and 9, or to turn, type R or L. Well, um, I guess our goal is to get him to that tent there, right? That was the whole point. He's supposed to get some coffee from the tent, so uh, let's press L. There we go. Keep typing commands until you get Robin to the mess tent. Type a number to make him walk. Uh, type R or L to make him turn. If I make him walk, is he going to walk right into that fire? Okay, apparently not. Let's see, let's make him take a... He takes fairly broad steps for a robot. Let's see, do I want to make him... Let's just do... Let's just do one step for now, turn left, and then... And then do like... What happens if I press 9 here? Is he going to walk into the tent? Okay, he stopped when he reached the tent. Good. The next step is to tell Robin to make a cup of coffee, put sugar and cream in it, and bring it back to you. This requires all the instructions you see on the next screen. Uh, you would have, I mean, you don't have to actually do this, uh, but it just strikes me it would have been pretty funny if they'd put a, a surgeon style, a surgeon simulator style kind of mini game here where you have to move the robot's arm and get him to put uh, sugar and cream in the coffee. But that kind of a physics-based game was, I think, a little bit beyond um, this kind of thing back. Well, you probably could have still made it, but it would have been more, certainly much more rudimentary than uh, a game like Surgeon Simulator today. You'd never get out on the trail if you had to direct Robin step by step every morning, but you don't have to. Instead, you put the set of instructions into Robin's memory and call it Good Morning. And I just want to mention, I was always quite conscious. I, I was always a bit frustrated by this program because, okay, the first line is clear. It's, it's a program called Good Morning. And procedure, make coffee. Okay, fair enough. Um, but the instructions that it gives you here actually just, um, it just includes the... Um, the left and right instructions and the numbers. So this tells you how to actually get to, uh, how to make the robot walk to where he wants to, but it doesn't actually, contrary to what the previous message I think led us to believe, it doesn't tell you um, how to actually do anything with the coffee. I mean, it, it, there's there, there's a procedure that just says, do make coffee. Well, actually, that's this procedure here. Okay, I see. So, so this is actually just saying, do the first procedure there and then do the second procedure. Okay, that's fine, but where does the sugar come from? I mean, making the w robot walk around doesn't actually, uh, I don't know, I always, I always felt like I was getting a bit ripped off here because what I wanted to do was really see how the process works, like how the process of making the coffee works, not just the process of making the robot move around, but really how the robot actually puts the sugar and cream in the coffee and, and cooks the coffee or, or boils the coffee or whatever and things like that. Um, and then it occurred to me, uh, you know, for that matter, these left and right functions are not explained either. I mean, how does the robot know how to turn left and right and take uh, steps from one, from a number of steps from one to nine? That's also something we don't really see. We don't really see how these procedures work internally. And it, it strikes me now that was that was probably a fairly um, 
I don't, I don't want to brag, but I, that was probably a fairly perceptive thing for a six-year-old kid to say when looking at this code. I mean, you know, a, a kid looking at this code and saying, well, okay, that's all very well and good, but how do these left and right functions work? I mean, where's the, where's the code for the left and right functions? It appears to not be documented here. Why did they hide it from us? Um, so yeah, I was always upset about that, and I'm still upset about that. I still don't, I mean, all this is just doing is giving you a big list of R's and L's and numbers, which is fine, but that's just like the, the rudimentary stuff. I want to see how this stuff works on the inside. That's always been um, who I am. I've always been the kind of person who wants to, uh, wants to understand how everything works on the inside, including software functions. Okay, anyway, sorry, went on a bit of a tangent there. As soon as you wake up, you say good morning, and Robin begins to run through his instructions. Try giving him instructions now. Type good morning and press return. Ah, but here it does not show an exclamation mark. In the previous screen it said uh, you have to tell him good morning with an exclamation mark. So do I say it with or without an exclamation mark? Or is punctuation irrelevant? Let's try it with a question mark. Oh, that's... Oh, this is set up for a different keyboard layout than what I actually have. Um, okay, then sure, let's try it with with three sets of curly braces. Hey, that's, it just occurs to me, uh, curly brace was a robot as well, so maybe this will, uh, maybe this will work out well for, uh, for Robin. Indeed it did. It did not appear, to, it, okay, so it appears to completely ignore punctuation. Robin's set of instructions is called a program. It's just like the programs that work in your Apple 2GS, except that Robin's programs deal with taking steps and carrying coffee cups, while your 2GS's programs deal with manipulating pieces of information. All these disks contain instructions for the Apple 2GS. Just as you could get Robin to the mess tent by calling good morning, you can get your 2GS to do things just by putting a program in the disk drive. In fact, so many people have written programs for the Apple 2GS that you can go along quite happily without ever doing any programming at all. That is actually not true. The Apple 2GS, in quite stark contrast to the Apple II before it, uh, did not, in fact, have a lot of programs written for... There were countless programs written for the Apple II, but the 2GS was always sort of an underdog. It was not well understood by programmers at the time, or, or at any time, and um, it, it was becoming somewhat overshadowed by the Macintosh even back then. I remember when uh, when we had the 2GS, we were sort of against the Macintosh and said, you know, the Macintosh is... Uh, is not a very good computer, but the Apple II is is a, a very good computer, which actually, looking back now, I think was true, and which I still agree with. But um, unfortunately, the Mac was the um, the computer that won in the market in the open market, which is why there should be communism. Because uh, if there had been communism, the Apple II would have won. Anyway, uh, so why learn to program then? There are at least a few reasons. You might like it. To many people, programming is fascinating fun. You might want to instruct your Apple to do something very specific for which no one else has written a program. Or you might want to launch yourself on a career as a computer programmer. If any of these applies to you, you'll want to take cl a closer look at programming. I remember also, um, there is a book called, uh, I think it's just called the Apple II GS book. And I actually had it when I was a kid. We actually got it with the computer. I, we didn't get it with the computer thing. We bought it later. But um, the book also kind of asks these questions. And the book uses the example of, uh, I think, of shark bladders. It, it says, you know, maybe you're a, a, an oceanographer researching shark bladders and you need to make a program to calculate the volume of a uh, shark bladder or something. Uh, uh, well, you, you probably won't find a program like that on the market. So if your needs are that specific, then you might need to learn how to program it yourself. That is probably true, but I don't think I've ever seen anyone program uh, to... I don't think I've ever, ever seen anyone write a program about calculating the volume of shark bladders, so that is still a an unfilled market niche that uh, that everyone should rush to fill. 
the AppleSoft Basic Manual that came with your Apple IIgs is a good place to start. Here again, see this. Uh, it, I, uh, this is the uh, the manual that I mentioned. Uh, I think it was called. Yeah, the title of it was A Touch of AppleSoft Basic. If you Google that phrase in quotation marks, you can probably still find it. I think it's uh, available as PDFs uh, on the internet now. Um, but yeah, it was it was actually a really nice manual, and it was again it was in a very nice tone, uh, like not you know not very formal and official and technical, but really like like very uh, that sort of chatty uh, by the fireside kind of chatting uh, tone that uh, that Apple had in their user manuals back then, which was really good. I mean, Apple was Apple did a lot of things right. They, the, the Macintosh was not one of them, but Apple did a lot of things right back then. Like they had very good user documentation that really introduced people to computers who were not, um, they knew that these, uh, some of these people might not be comfortable with computers and they really went the extra mile to try to introduce those people into the experience of using a computer. So I have, uh, I have tremendous respect for, um, and admiration for, for Apple and what Apple was as a company back in the 1980s when they were making great machines like the Apple II GS. I have not much respect for the Apple of today. Um, I mean, the, well, the iPhone is okay. The iPhone's okay as a, Anyway, sorry, I, I keep getting distracted by uh, by inserting my personal opinions on Apple. Um, let me just insert my personal opinion about this animation. This is a great animation. This is like a perfect example of retro computer animation where you see the pages flipping uh, flipping back and forth. This is another. I, d I just love pixel art like this and little pixel animations like that. Anyway, okay, so yeah, the Apple the AppleSoft Basic Manual that came with your Apple II GS is a good place to start. Nice. Nice music. I think I've already mentioned that I like the music in this program, but... Okay, so yeah, that was it. Um, I'm probably not going to show off the other sections. I mean, you know, identifying parts like this. <laughs> this literally tells you, you know, what's a monitor, what's a mouse, what's a keyboard, things like that. I mean, that's kind of... I mean, if anybody's curious, you can go through this yourself. But I just wanted to, uh, to show the programming segment briefly because uh, somebody did request it. Uh, years ago, and it just kind of occurred to me, and I, I was just suddenly in a mood to make this video, so I did. So, there you go. That's a, a video about something. Um, I guess that's it. I apologize. Uh, I know I've probably upset some people who are Mac fans, and I, I'm sure that some people will say, uh, well, people probably won't say anything, but they will be very hurt and, and sad and upset, and, and they will feel that I've um, that I've personally insulted them, so... So I, I just, if anybody feels that way, I just want to say, I mean, if, of course, if you if you use a Mac, it doesn't make you a bad person. Please understand, I'm not I'm not saying, you're not a bad person for using a Mac. You're just using a bad computer. Um, anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop now. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope that you enjoyed. I hope that this little glimpse into something was worth the 18 minutes that you <laughs> that you'll never get back from watching it. I will probably make more videos of other things in the future. Until then, folks, I'll see you.